We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just two seventy nine. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Listeners, we have discovered the nation's number one transcribed adventure story. A newspaper strip that has come to life on the air, Terry and the Pirates. Terry and the Pirates is brought to you by the makers of Libby's Tomato Juice. One of Libby's hundred famous foods. Well, kids, today's the big day. The day of the super special feature I promised you last night. Right after the show, you're going to have the thrill of a lifetime. We fix things up so Terry himself can talk direct to you. And boy, has he got news. Yes, sir, you'll sure get a wallop out of the surprise Terry's going to tell you about. Not to mention the thrill of hearing direct from him way over there in China. So keep your ears glued to the radio, boys and girls. The minute the show is over, the big news will break. And now, Terry and the Pirates. Well, well, well. Things have taken a turn for the better as we join Terry and his friends in the Dragon Lady's hideout in the Chinese mountains. With the help of the powerful servant, Big Stoop, all our adventuring friends have been freed from the stone room. Yes, and with the help of a peculiar periscope, really called a periscope, our friends have made prisoners of the Dragon Lady's assistant, Mr. Keel, and the crook, Lawyer Spur. It's a cold, gray, misty morning now. Jude Hennick, the plane pilot, has released April Kane and Burma from their cell and has taken them back across the field to his plane. He hopes to get it set for a takeoff. So let's join Pat Ryan and Terry. The huge, silent, big stoop is with him. He holds Mr. Keel by the collar. Well, Pat, what's our next move? The dude's taking the girl off the plane. He's going to try to fly him away from here. We want that radio invention. Even if Brother Keel isn't keen on helping us. I do not know where it is. I've told you that before. Yeah, I know. I've told you. I followed Mr. Spell to this building. I saw him force the window and enter. I followed him a few moments later. You know the rest. Yeah. I know I caught you and Spur. And you were both sneaking in here for one thing. There's a lie. I did not come to steal the radio invention. Well, if you followed Mr. Spur here to stop him from stealing that little radio transmitter, then you must know where it is. I was mistaken. I only thought I knew where it was. I thought you were the dragon lady's right-hand man. I am employed by the lady that is all. That's enough. Say, what's become of Connie? was standing here a moment ago. And if that word-twisting Chinese boy does anything more to get us in hot water, I'll skin him alive. Say, you got that periscope with you? Yeah, right here. Ah, so that is how you look down into the room below, eh? That's right. We saw the dragon lady take the portable transmitter out of a cabinet. You know, Keel, I think the dragon lady would like to know that you and Mr. Spur had planned to steal the radio invention from her. That's the lie. Now look, Bristlecop. Did the dragon lady know you came over to this building just before dawn today? No, I I saw no reason to... Okay, she want an explanation. And I'm just a little old fellow who can give it to her. She won't believe you. I think I can do business with your boss. What are you going to do, Pat? Well, we just caught Lawyer Spur and Mr. Empting Keel. Both of them trying to steal the radio device. That is not so. You be quiet. I'll well, have big stoop shake your eye teeth out. And where was I? Oh, yes. The dragon lady doesn't like her help to double-cross her. She will not believe that I did that. Then what are you so nervous about? Now, look, Terry, it's daylight now. We can't go outside, at least not yet. Use the periscope and take a look around, will you? Yeah, sure. See, I can open a small window and stick the periscope out. Just far enough to... Oh, 
I'll look through this end of the telescope and... Well, what does the wide world look like outside? Uh, he's coming this way. I can see her. She, she just came out of a doorway. The dragon lady? Yeah. She can't stay here. She'll open this door and come in. Yeah, now, now look. You, Super. Take them bad fellow in that room. Hold them mouth. No talking, Savvy. And you, Terry. Go with Stoop and Keel. Oh, here. Here, you take this gun. And hold the door open just wide enough to see out here with the periscope. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. But I want to talk to the lady. We can't make a deal with her. Well, she's right here and I can handle it. Go on now. Get out of sight. Well, good morning. What? How did... You're just in time to have breakfast. Oh, good morning, Mr. Ryan. Now, it's a little early in the day to talk, but you want some explanations, I'm Please sure. Please be quick. Now, hold on. I don't like that tone of voice. You sound like you were still tracking the whip. Well, well, what is the meaning of all this? Who dared to let you out of your room? I gave no orders. Oh, never mind that. I have other news for you. Well, speak quickly, then. Now, listen. I caught two of your crooked playmates last night in this building. They came here looking for the radio transmitter. Did you know that? Whom do you mean? Lawyer Spur and Mr. Keel. Of course, if you sent them here to break in by way of a window, then it's different. How can I believe what you tell me? Now, stop acting like a prima donna. You and I have tangled before, and we've always taken each other's word, right? Mr. Ryan, what is it you wish? Well, I figure it this way. You stole that radio transmitter, but I'll make a deal with you. After all, those two gents, Spur and Keel, were going to steal it from you. They couldn't do that. They could try. I should like to question those men. There's plenty of time for that. Now, what about you and I? What is the plan you have? I don't want that radio transmitter for myself. I want it for the Chinese army. So they can use it against the invaders. I shall not give that invention to you. I need it for myself. Okay, okay. But why prevent the Chinese army from using it? Let them have it too. I don't want any money, nothing. The invention belongs to the girl, April King. Whatever money comes from it goes to her. Then I should talk to her, not you. You'll talk to me and like it. And if I refuse to listen to you any further? Then I'll tell you something else you won't like. You had a servant once, a huge man mountain, strong as a couple of oxen, and a disposition as sweet as a baby's smile. You remember him? We call him Big Stoop because he can't talk. Well? He can't talk because you fixed it so he couldn't. He hasn't forgotten that, and I don't blame him. It was Big Stoop who broke in here and let us out. And he's not very far away. If he ever gets his big hands on you, it's goodbye. See what I mean? No, I don't want him to break you up in little pieces, but Stooper is hard to control when he gets mad. And he's sure real mad with you. I can walk out of here. Oh, no, you can't, lady. Don't turn around and don't try to use a gun. A <laughs> uh, dragon lady doesn't happen to have a gun up her sleeve, Terry. Sir Ryan is correct. I have no gun. Hey, Terry, come on out. That big soup staying there with his pal. Super, you stay here with bad fellow. Hold him tight. Hello, dragon lady. Kind of early in the morning, huh? Terry Lee, you will not live long in this country. You have a charmed life. But good luck cannot follow you forever. That's a very pretty speech, but let's stick to our knitting. Do we make a deal? I have no objection to assisting the Chinese army. I bear the army no grudge, but I shall not give up the radio transmitter. All right, what will you do? I owe you a debt. You presented Keel and Spur for making off for the invention. I shall repay that debt. Fair enough. I shall accompany you to the headquarters of the Chinese army. We shall submit the radio transmitter. If accepted, any money received shall go to the girl, April Kane. However, I shall have the right to produce these small transmitters for my own use. Is that clear? Yes. The deal. Well, let's get the transmitter and get started. Very well. Follow me. Where are you going? Into the large room across the hall. I placed the invention in a small cabinet against the wall. But it isn't there. What is that you say? It wasn't there last night. Pat and I looked. We broke open the chair. Oh, lady, do you think the radio gadget was still in there? Come, we shall see. I placed it in this cabinet last night. Mr. Keel was here with me. Oh. Go. Oh, we knew it wasn't in this cabinet, but we thought you'd taken it away and hidden it someplace else. 
So you and I have both been seated, eh? Now neither one of us has the device. Well, just a minute, lady. Just a minute. What kind of a game are you trying to play? You know where the radio device is. You know what's in this cabinet. And now you're trying to pretend it's been stolen from us. No, I don't swallow that line. You can't make me believe a third person took the radio from here. This cabinet was locked when we broke in and the cabinet was empty. Very well. If you didn't take the invention and if I didn't, and you have my word for that, then suppose you tell me who did. Transmitter, transmitter, who's got the transmitter? Well, it looks like the dragon lady and Terry and Pat will work together yet. But let's not forget the Terry scope, because it's going to play a big part in this next adventure. Attention, boys and girls, for the big moment. Your friend, Terry Lee, is going to speak to you. Yes, we fixed things up so Terry himself can talk direct to you. Now, hold on while we cut him in. All right, Terry. Are you there? Shoot. Hello, all of you kids over there at home. Golly, I'm glad to have this chance to talk to you, because I sure have some news for you. News with a capital F. You know that curry scope I figured out? The one I made with some cardboard and pieces of mirror the girls dropped through the wall? Say, that good old curry scope has sure got Pat and Connie and all of us out of plenty of tight places. Well, now, look, here's the big news for you. Every one of you kids can now get a curry scope of your own that's exactly like the one I made. How's that for a swell surprise? Of course, in a way, your cherry scope will be better than mine, because I just have to use what I could find, broken pieces of mirror and a piece of old cardboard Connie found stuck in a window. But your cherry scope will be brand new and beautiful. Take it from me, kids, a cherry scope like mine is a keen thing to have. Why, you can see around corners with it and see what's going on behind you and over your head? Well, golly, I guess you remember how many times that cherry scope has saved the day for us. Of course, I'll be real pleased to think of all of you kids getting a cherry scope like mine, so... I sure hope each of you sends for one right away quick. I guess the folks at the other end are going to give you the dope on just how to get it, so I'll sign off. Goodbye now, and I hope you'll send for your cherry soap soon. Thank you, Terry. Thanks a lot for telling the boys and girls over here about this wonderful surprise. Say, kids, isn't it marvelous to think you can actually have a cherry soap just like Terry's for your very own, and you can get it so easily? All you do is take a label from a can of Libby's swell-tasting tomato juice and one from Libby's Hawaiian pineapple juice and print your full name, age, and address on the back of one. Then put the labels in an envelope along with ten cents and mail to Terry, care of Libby's, Chicago, Illinois. You got that address? Terry, care of Libby's, spelled L-I-B-B-Y-S, in Chicago. First thing you know, the mailman will bring you your cherry scope, and boy, will you have fun. You know, that cherry scope is really even more exciting than Terry told you, because it not only lets you actually see around corners and in back of you, but it also gives you the secret Chinese code that Terry taught Connie and Big Soup. Yes, and it gives you the Morse code, too. And furthermore, it's got a treasure hunt panel with a swell game. And also, a trick you can play with a picture of Big Soup. Well, all in all, kids, this Terry Scope has eight extra special features. Now, remember, you send just two Libby labels and a dime. One label from Libby's tomato juice, one from Libby's pineapple juice. Mail them with your full name, age and address, and ten cents to Terry, care of Libby's, Chicago, Illinois. So get going. Be the first in your gang to get a Terry Scope. Now join us for a laugh and a surprise and a thrill way over in China. Because that's where this newest and most exciting transcribed adventure takes place tomorrow. And you'll always know this program because it opens like this. We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just $2.79. 
Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.